important to winning on this map. Let's see what happens as we're on board of Cloud9 to start the game. Uh, indeed, from Cloud9, scary roster. They, they play incredibly fast. I mean, they were uh, three of these players were part of that uh, incredible Spice roster who almost reinvented how you play Halo 5. Is almost a split two and two system. And since then, the pace and the environment of competitive Halo 5 is completely changed. And, and you see these young guns uh, kind trying to not, I wouldn't say mimic, but uh, it thrive off that fast pace, um, a fast paced start. But we see Force actually being the side to come out on top with the first two bases captured and getting points on the board early yes. but it is strong odds after all the game is not over until it hits that you know the later stages um but force getting a good on there uh, it's going to be a good motivator for them knowing that they are the first team to get points on the board but immediately they, they didn't even break 10 points and cloud9 is already to scoring once again yeah, look at Bards, he's flying in. He's not gonna let this one shot live for long. Eco eventually taken down, but Stellar wins the fight over at Engine 1. But what that's done, Force has forced uh, Cloud9 away from that nest side, but they immediately opt to go take on Yellow Corner. And this is an interesting strategy from Force, right? They're he heavily fighting at Yellow Corner, which is gonna leave them exposed to a flank. And that's exactly what Stellar does. One of the smartest players in the game. He takes advantage, finds a couple kills, but Flurious and Bards, they got what they wanted. They broke through the tower side and they're capturing BR base, but they left the Carbine spawn open and it's just going to be temporary points because of the basement going back in favor of Cloud9. Once again, man, they're just, they're quick on the rotations. Rami gets taken out. Three go down. They're ready to start capping out on Nest and to force the basement splits. We'll see what happens as two players do get that Carbine spawn, but Bards immediately hit shots. The nades are coming through. They're hitting. Nest is getting secured. Can he get it all the way he does and this is a great start from force they've been put on their back foot a couple times but they've responded beautifully each time they've done it and now railguns up camouflage gonna be up as well which team gets away with it is the question yeah, and uh, what we see Eco here doing, controlling that uh, top tower, is so crucial in getting hold of the camo and the railgun. And and by uh, by Eco controlling that top tower, they have been able to get control of both. Uh, you get lines of sight uh, onto both, and it makes it very difficult for e uh, the opposition to break through. But uh, we see Stella doing a fantastic job of being a distraction, and Penguin coming in and getting three kills, I believe, uh, to take down Force. And now this is dangerous for the side of Forza. A, a potential momentary triple cap is on the, the cards here for Cloud9 as they have now get, regained control of the nest and basement and are scoring once again. But it is still very close. 26 all. Uh, you know, Force doing a good job. They're hanging with the Cloud9 sides. They haven't let Cloud9 just run away with this, which is really good to see. Yeah, but the problem is this. Railgun's in the hands of Renegade. Penguin has the scatter shot, and Stellar just got rid of the camouflage. They literally have everything on the map, and they're using it to their advantage. You can see Force just constantly having to fight out of their spawns, and it's just such a toll to take. You can't constantly win. You're eventually going to lose one, and this is going to be the one that they lose. The trip cap now firmly in effect for this cloud nine roster and i mean penguin just trying to find oh my god penguin just got killed by rammy i don't know what the hell is going on right there but penguin if he got the trade out at least but rammy being a little bit of a sticky beaver over at that yellow corner yeah, Rami was using Penguin as a jungle gym, I swear, just then. What, what a play from him. The scatter shot was in the hands of Penguin, and he just seems to just like disappear and able to get a goal. What a play from Rami, but still the control is in the side of Cloud9. Uh, Force have been able to play the triple cap, and it looks like they're able, they're able to put some points on the board uh, after capping that basement. But as we say, we've been saying a lot, so if you overextend towards that basement side, you're going to leave those outside spawns open, and immediately the best basement is traded out for the side of Cloud9 uh, and they are scoring once again um, force they've really got to kind of out rotate Cloud9 if they want to do anything here they've got to make sure that their rotations are can keep on them being clean uh, capture base and at the same time get oh, those slates and massive bars. What a kill from him. And if he can stay oh. alive now, and he is. Oh, no, he just gets taken down. It's a huge fight for seriously, which he unfortunately gets pinched. So he cannot capture that basement. That was such a big play by Bard, so he gets behind the Railgun player, takes him out, then uses the Railgun to take out the Camouflage player and lives, but just could not live long enough to let Flariously come in and cap that basement. They eventually do lose that fight, but it stops them 
from feeling that trip cap pressure for a little bit they're going to be able to try to slay out and get themselves back in the swing of things furiously finds his trade but renegade just perched up in tower two gonna find the players that overextend he's on top the time for the next scatter shot and that to me it's gonna make this comeback nearly impossible for force right the scatter shot still in favor of this cloud nine roster they have them trapped in the back of basement they're hyper aware of the spawns and this is just a stronghold and anaconda basically squeezing the life out of this fourth roster in game one yeah and, and cloud nine doing an incredible job and you, you talk about sniper players you talk about cam, uh, camo players uh, but there is a, a scatter shot play style uh, and renegade is one of those able to get so up close and personal and uh, fly around the map uh, and pose that gap to where the scatter shop is most effective and that is so scary and uh, i do think you're right and with this momentum this control uh it's going to be so difficult for force to get back into this game it's so difficult indeed as penguin puts the trip cap in effect though br base is being taken but penguin gets there in time to get the reset and that's just nasty as the trip caps in effect they're still spawning at the bunker and all the players are pushed forward they're not going to be able to get out of that trap at all the splits are coming from basement but you already see eco there and ready with the railgun to put a stop to it he finds one and that's just going to apply the pressure the pressure just of mount and mounting through and through as cloud nine is going to take our first game and they look as if they made it look easy on the second half with the power up control and and the spawn control that they uh, applied to this force roster i mean shout out the force for getting the 40 points that they did most of it coming early on in that game but once cloud nine got their footing got their momentum they really just never let it up yeah, Cloud9, so incredibly scary, uh, getting all the, the gain those points pretty much all in one go. But we look at the kills here, uh, double digits across the board for Cloud9, and then Fluorously being the only player to break double digits for the slide, uh, the opposition. Uh, what a play from Cloud9. You know, all the, it, the panic, the manicness, the craziness that happens at the beginning of a Strongholds game. Those points, yeah, they went, to, uh, they went, to, it was just a side. And, but ever since then, it was all Cloud9. They got control of absolutely everything on the map, uh, and then we just had no room to breathe. Uh, a very impressive performance, impressive showing for them. Uh, but Force doing a good job. They were able to maintain composed. They got those 40 points, as you said. Um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing them bounce back and really take it to Cloud9 once again. Yeah, we're going into a Slayer, and it's going to be on Truth, right? So it's going to be pistols only no uh no power weapons to be used uh this time around as we're loading into this final truth uh into this first slayer that is truth and honestly it's going to come down to that power up control camouflage going to be so important and then using the sandbox getting that tack magnum and the nuke combo that spawns up top mid also going to be important but let's see who gets this camouflage off rip as eco's throwing nades force come down it's rammy that gets the burn but penguin quickly cuts him down and he's going to find himself a double kill with the help of eco eco steals it away at the last second but tied up to all both teams have uh have the time on the camouflage and it looks like cloud nine is just going to end edge themselves out as the victor off the early start as they're going to collapse in and find a couple kills and get a bit more map control than force yeah and a brilliant stick coming out of firstly onto penguin firstly was nowhere to be seen penguin was a bit lost but this is definitely an exciting game type uh, some of the best pistol shots in the world in this lobby uh, facing up against each other uh, you know as you were saying the camo control is so pivotal but uh, truth uh, being you know an og remaker of halo maps uh, that p side control is so important to hold um, and also that top mid control you can hold those two areas you can force the bubble spawns you can force the top base for spawns you get to manipulate how the map plays uh, and that gives opportunity especially in slayer to collapse uh, and that's where you get a steamroll going that's where you get the the momentum flowing for your side but right now it's very even and but force once again coming out hot and getting a lead early on in the game but uh, that is the lead is diminishing rather quickly yeah, look at this, this game tightening up 12 all between these rosters 
as Penguin is moving to the left to fill in that spot to help Eco with whatever fight he has. But the car spawns are in effect. Eco had enough influence on the red spawns to force him out towards the bubble. And that could be devastating for this force roster as they're trapped and have to fight their way out. But fighting their way out, they are doing as they're winning fights. Oh, Penguin win this one. There we go. Furiously almost put Penguin uh, in his montage with that reversal from car two. But Penguin clutches it out at the last second. But once again, what we see from Force is that they're so tight together because they're having, they're struggling with finding their way out of spawns. They're constantly being put on a cycle as Eco just grabbed the camouflage to work with, and that could start to build a lead out for this Cloud9 roster. Yeah, and Eco with the camo is a scary sight. Such a smart player he is. He won't over challenge. He knows when to back down. And he right now will be just being gathering information for his side. Um, a huge win over Vetra. Penguin keeping Eco alive. And, and this information that he's gathering with the camo is going to be invaluable for his side. Uh, and just with this camo alone, they've gone to a 24 to 16 lead. It was just tied a second ago. Uh, what impressive utilization of the power ups on the map uh, for the C9 side. And look at this ego staying alive for the camo for now, but it's just about to run out and he's going to be trapped here at P1. And yeah, he's quickly taken out as the players were very aware of where he was. And look at Barge using that little clamber ledge on the car side to get himself up to car two to get the advantage versus Stellar. He's going to find that kill. And there we go. Some life coming back. Uh, the life force being filled within this roster, if you will, <laughs> as they're starting to find kills on the map. Barge trying his best to stay alive will eventually get taken down but stabilizing the deficit for now is force right they, they were on their back foot it was looking bad they find a way to stabilize it out and a play out for slays once again yeah and uh, bard's obviously been watching some shy way videos to do that jump because uh, it is a very nice one indeed but the stabilization from force as you said it, it, it's key it, it's kind of damage control until you can find your footing uh, and they've done exactly that and it's now 26 to 29 and so uh, these games they're going to be fairly close up until the 30 kill marker uh, but uh, force has stopped c9 from running away from it and right now it's about let's get some map control let's get that top mid let's get that p side let's be aware of the next camo which is up very very soon and let's utilize it to gain a lead as we head towards the 30 kill marker but furiously going down so early shut down by renegade and that's an opening for c9 and they will be collapsing now to get these kills but as i say that two players from force doing a brilliant job of rotating through the car set into red to, to try and force their teammates to spawn there but uh, i don't know if that was happening but wow what a what a set of kills a brilliant job from force for staying alive and doing that rotation Right, those nades coming out were so crucial because if they didn't get those kills with nades, they would have been two down, no kills. There was no shot that they were going to win that fight versus Cloud9 if they didn't get those nades to be well placed and they killed them on their way in. But they do that, but once again, it comes out where Force are trapped in their base and they have to slay their way out. And they've done a good enough job of it as, as of now to keep themselves close in this game. But the longer it happens, the more likely, the more susceptible you are to see put on a rotation. And the rotation, it seems as if it was just starting. But once again, force stabilize their way out. They find three picks. Now it's up to them to expand across the map and to find players in unsuspecting locations as Eco can't quite finish that kill at P3 and is now in trouble himself at P2. He needs to live. Live, he cannot as Flariously gets the cross map shots. I mean, Force are doing an absolutely incredible job uh, of shutting down C9's collapses um, by staying alive. And this is why this game is so close. There were so many opportunities for C9 to completely run away. But uh, Force is like, nah, mm -mm, let, let's use our force of will to stay alive here and not to die. Um, but, uh, as was, you know, C9 looking for that collapse once again, trying to get this kills, trying to close out the map. They have four kills remaining to take this victory. Two kills now. Uh, so Force really need to focus on staying alive, winning their ones as Renegade's doing a brilliant job of staying alive in car one. He knows that there is a player alive on that blue bubble side as all players from Force are spawning on the blue side. So Cloud9 may be looking to collapse to end this game. They can trade out some kills. They have got that life total, but still it is painfully close. Yeah, and look at that. Two players go down on the side of Cloud9. Renegade playing that car one spot. And you know, normally you don't, you don't think of that as a power position, but car one can be so devastating 
on a true slayer but force have done it they've gotten themselves in a position where if they get four players down and they somehow live they'll be able to make the comeback happen but as i say it the nades come through bards is found out at the car bubble you, they saw him at the car bubble and they instantly pushed three players forward through as many nades as possible and bards just could not escape from the damage but they played it very close 50 to 47 a closer stat line than i think most expected this time around but now they're on they're down 2-0 this is their last shot. There, there's no more. Uh, there's no more grace period. If you're gonna make the win happen, the reverse sweep happen. It starts with this next game. It really does. Their life. Uh, it's on the line for them. Uh, they want to come back in the series. They have to win the next game. Um, uh, and I, I think they have the capability of doing that. Yeah, the stronghold was a bit of blow for blowout, 100 to 11. But that game was so incredibly close. I reckon if Bards hadn't pushed out to bubble, this. He could still be in that game, 49 all. Um, and so, incredible job from um, the side of Force. Uh, and I, I think the most impressive thing uh, from that game for this Force side was that damage control uh, and that you know stabilization, as you called it, not to get taken out and not to get consistently collapsed on. We saw three or four times in which Cloud9 were pushing for that collapse, but uh, Force were able just to stabilize, stay alive, get some kills, and push out. But in the end of it, Cloud9 were just too strong and won. 50-47. Just a three kill difference though. Uh, oddball fissure. I mean, how, how, how much credit should we give Force as it goes up against Cloud9 in Oddball? Well, I guess the question is how much credit do we give Cloud9? I, their mm, their oddball record is not the greatest. That's definitely where their struggles have been seen is, is on the oddball game type. So if Force is going to steal away a game and try to get themselves some momentum, it's on an oddball game because it is clearly the weakest link when it comes to uh, when it comes to Cloud9's gameplay. Indeed, indeed, it is so uh, oddball is up next uh, uh, cloud nine not having the the strongest showing on oddball force will be looking to take a victory against them uh, here now but eco being so fast on that quick flank and he's going to find two kills really fast uh, against uh, rami and furiously and that's immediately a, a fresh four dead for the side of cloud nine and they come away with the overshield uh, so uh, this setup is going to be crucial for them renegade is going to be roaming a lot looking for these early kills putting damage down onto as many players as possible it's going to make it very difficult to break this setup, but, um, but Force doing a good job trying to collapse. And uh, right now they have the opportunity. The ball is down, and a back smack coming out onto Renegade from Bard, mitigating that OS. A huge opportunity for Force to shut down the point scoring for the side of Cloud9. Uh, what a back smack from him! Yeah, look at that, and he immediately pushes forward and gets the kill on Penguin as well. He's really just being the. Uh, being that slayer that they need at the moment to give them some momentum, to give them some room to work with, because that's what Cloud9 does so well. They suffocate you in that back base with the pressure that they apply, with the high flyers that they have in Renegade, Stellar, and Eco. But the ball is played, four go down. Good enough job by Force to get it off the map, but when you go four down, there's no one to watch anyone on the on the reset. So that's gonna be Eco who grabs that ball and immediately pushes it back to the base. And once again, that, that pressure that we saw cloud nine apply that's what force needs to do right back to them they have to get in the base and force these players down as rammy finds a double kill and that could be exactly what he, he gets the triple kill and somehow stays alive he instantly breaks the setup of cloud nine by himself what a triple from Rami, uh, doing it all. He is that slayer, he's that OG player we know and love, and he got that triple to immediately break the setup. And now Force have an opportunity to score again, but as I say that, Cloud9 were able to respond immediately with some kills for themselves and have the ball control. But uh, the pivotal moment here is the OS. It is going to be popping soon. If Force can get hold of this, it's going to for, uh, allow for an easy, an easier break uh, of a C9 setup. It doesn't look like many C9 players are dropping for it. Only Renegade is going for it right now. Um, and they do have time in it, but Bard's able to come away with this overshield. Now they got to push, 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 um, and get some kills on the board and break the C9 setup. Don't let them catch up. Uh, don't let them take any more lead even uh, of the points. Wall was played and Bard's is going to use that OS to tank shots. Uh, oh, so quick burn so quickly, but he is able to get the ball back towards his teammates and uh, able to hold his setup now. 
right they have the setup but every time we see them with the setup the kills have been lacking can they come out on top in the kill column this time around as trades are coming through and it's basically dead ball at this point flurriously needs to get to a play spot ram he's been made one shot the players from cloud nine are pushing in he needs to get to a play position and just hold it there until his team can uh, recover he does just that he gets the ball off but cannot live for the time being vetra comes in he has a one-on-one -on -one versus penguin the shots are not going in his favor and there we go cloud nine collapse back in and every time we think force has a potential to get uh, a hold for an extended period of time it seems as if cloud nine instantly breaks those setups but where cloud nine's weakness really is is when it comes to that power up control when it comes to realizing the correct time to rotate and to get that ball off they have this tendency to hold on for a little bit too long and to let other teams slay their way back into the game yeah and os is placed so interestingly on this map it's not like truth uh, not like regret even when you can where you can almost fly in and steal the overshield uh, from bottom mid you have to set up for it because there's only two entrances and if you get some nades in that bottom mid area uh, you're gonna get get blown up to pieces so you have to set up and control the os one in order to get it on this map uh, but we see still here veteran on a nice fight the os is going to pop soon but uh, the player being so stellar being so annoying to kill he does get the play eventually but because the ball is played all players are going to turn their attention onto that os uh, and that's a big trade out between renegade and barnes and once again a trade on bottom mid so nobody is there for the os it is up it's a pace race and stella oh. the speed demon that he is is able to get there first and come away with this overshield i thought for sure that he was going to go down with two players looking straight at him but he stays alive and that'll probably be what is the nail in the coffin for this force roster they just haven't been able to get the ball time they've needed play they needed plays from the overshield and the power uh, and the power control uh when it comes to the position on the map really to get themselves ball time where cloud nine they rely on their individual slays their individual talent in order to get themselves room to work with and they've done a beautiful job at it this game as they extend out their lead by over 60 points stellar getting behind some backs and finds himself a double kill as it's looking all cloud nine in our third game yeah and uh, when you're playing against cloud nine you don't want to so seek these like one-on-one -on -one gunfights all the time you have to be all team shotting because the these guys on cloud nine uh, we, you know we've watched them over the years they don't miss uh, and actually missing is a rare sight for this side and so taking those one-on-one -on -one gunfights is so difficult so you really have to focus on that team shot but right now cloud9 is i'd say actually playing too uh, too quick force cannot seem to keep up right now uh, and uh, uh, this is a game three and so they're gonna have to they're gonna have to set up that force because uh, right now renegade is on the edge of taking the series yeah, they're getting to the point where it's just going to be too close for this Cloud9 roster to win the game. Only 16 seconds necessary for them to do it. If you get down to that 10 second mark, that's when you're going to see Cloud9. Every time they get one or two kills, they'll just fly out and try to get as much ball time as possible and, and play it over and over and over again. With six minutes left, this next over is going to be critical for Force's comeback. But they're going to have to go down to grab that over and take their eyes off ball, which is where Cloud9 could potentially sweep in and grab that ball away at the last second but there we go renegades already on top of the overshield if he gets this he'll just tank the shots grab the ball and basically put this game over yeah and, and it is not looking good for force renegade does opt to go for some slays first he does identify that his teammates may not be in the best position possible and that os is immediately burnt actually uh, away from uh, renegade who's taken out very quickly but stella using some nifty movement uh, in that window area but is taken down by bart eco now trying to look to milk some ball time and he is going to do so in a sneaky spot on that stairwell people seem to forget about that stairwell it's a very nice place to hold the ball especially when your teammates maybe be slightly out of position many angles to be able to play it uh, but we see here as you were saying cloud nine they're just gonna run away they're just gonna pick the ball and play it pick the ball and play it they're gonna milk time because uh, that's all the time they need right now yeah and look at this cloud nine they, they just immediately <laughs> put furiously in the dirt as soon as he went to pick up that ball <laughs> and bars goes down and with three down no one really in position to stop renegade from just getting the rest of this ball time it will be a three to zero victory 
in the favor of Cloud9. We saw a close second game with opportunities for that force roster to potentially take one off this world championship roster. They couldn't get it done. And look at that share of ball time between the three players on Cloud9. Everyone doing their part in Renegade being that main slayer going plus seven with a 20 of 14 stat line. Yeah, I mean, I think they just handed Renegade the ball at the end there because they realized that he needs to get some ball time with only 10 on the board. But, I mean, when you're slaying like that, uh, uh, who's to blame him? Uh, an incredible performance from C9. Um, and uh, Force doing a good job. You know, they, they stayed in the game. They stayed present. However, I think C9 just too quick off the gun. They were able to collapse so quickly. Whenever uh, Force had a setup, it was immediately gone within a couple of seconds because Cloud9 identified the scenario, didn't give any way, any, uh, give away any three deaths, uh, and they were just able to collapse and get the setup themselves. So a really uh, positive start for C9. Um, but uh, Force right now, uh, their next game will decide if they stay in the tournament and qualify or not. Uh, so a huge, huge upcoming game for um, Force, but we've seen there on the replay, Bard's a huge back smack onto Renegade to mitigate that OS. Yeah, and, and we saw it consistently throughout the games. Force, they, they played extremely well off the start, right? They, they, they let the tiny cuts kill them. I love this. I love this <laughs> replay function that we have now. Look at Stellar just getting behind the two and then landing perfect shots to take down Fluriously before he goes down. But yeah, Force, they don't have any problem when it comes to the immediate start of the game. They're just as talented as anyone else. It's that mid game where they truly struggle, where teams just have more experience. They've been there before. They know how to handle more situations. And it's really just gonna come down to reps for this Force roster to get to the point where they can potentially make an upset versus one of these top four teams. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's that comfortability that these top teams have in, in actually going down in score line. You know, when you go down in in, in, in any of the game types and, and oddball in particular, it, it's not to panic. You know, they went down in some points. Okay, it is what it is. Let's just make sure we execute the, the setup break efficiently and we get the next control of the ball. Uh, and Cloud9 did that uh, perfectly. Um, uh, but we're just looking at the uh, groups right now. Uh, Force obviously on their last uh, last legs uh, going into their next matchup. Uh, Inconceivable Sentinels, KCP, obviously all the team there and Cloud9 being the teams to beat. Uh, um, I, I, it, it, such an impressive showing from Force over, over Cloud9. I, I really think we mustn't mitigate how well they play. But Cloud9, they look really scary. You know, if they're going to, if they've obviously practiced oddball and they have uh, corrected the maybe the errors that they were making, um, and to take such a dominant fashion, they 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 are definitely a team that the rest of Group D will be looking to uh, upset. Yeah, so I just got word what our third game is going to be, Hop, and it's going to be an exciting one. If you look over at Group C, you'll see that sixth seed and that 11th seed, Elevate, going to be taking on Heart of the Cards. Heart of the Cards is going to be that roster that is uh, Spartan, Rain.